<coughs> wonderful to meet you all again after uh, after yesterday i hope uh, you got a chance to maybe think about all that we uh, spoke about and discussed yesterday and uh, hopefully today's session um, will be will be hopeful and useful as well uh, well if i have to be honest uh, a couple of things today's session is probably a little more difficult for me to kind of uh, interact and teach um, like you know like especially over zoom uh, that's one thing and the second thing is like um uh, last last evening like you know I was preparing for it somehow i got this uh, the stomach upset and like you know i i really couldn't spend as much time as i would have liked to 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 invest into into this presentation so hopefully like you know i'm able to give something at least like you know which you find uh, valuable and helpful helpful for you uh, so st stating that like um, let me get into the slides So, um, I want to start with this particular question. Uh, this this uh, book, this portion in the book of Acts, has always intrigued me. You know, Paul and Barnabas are one of the earliest like missionaries that we see in the church. There's so much of time that's given to to the to the work that they do, and on one side, like you know, Barnabas is the one who brings Paul and pulls him into ministry, and they leave. and they are doing extremely well and this this particular incident happens uh, i'm sure most of you would know this like you know when john mark um, like you know he first goes with them but he abandons the trip midway and then um, and then they want to go on a second trip barnabas wanted to take john mark with them but paul did not take him because paul says like you know he deserted us so let's not uh, like you know it's not a good sort of probably a waste of time uh, but these two guys could not agree and it led to such a disagreement that they parted okay two key early church leaders um two guys who have done phenomenally well like you know had such a big such a big difference that they had to part okay so uh, the question that i want to ask is this mm, the, the question um you know you know it would be good if we can unmute ourselves and talk who was right and who was wrong like you know uh, let me also uh, say another disclaimer over here i don't think there is one right answer as such uh, so this is just more like which position do you take who who says like so so these are the two positions right like you know on one side paul is saying this guy abandoned us he should not be part of our team he'll do that again he'll slow the ministry he's becoming a burden to what we what we want to do so let's not have him so that is paul's view on the other side like you know we have uh, barnabas who says like you know hey what about forgiveness what about second chance paul you should understand that of all people god gave you a second chance and that's what uh, this is about so uh, yes he did wrong but like you know let's forgive and take him back okay so that's probably the view of barnabas can i don't kick that i'm sorry yeah i would go along with barnabas with barnabas okay okay sister thank you anybody else i am with barnabas too because uh, i guess we have to be inclusive and uh, as you said about second chances excellent excellent very good thank you thank you sister for sharing that any other uh, views answers okay sister rani also says barnabas me too barnabas uh, to encourage another person who is Calling and uh, bring him back. He, he, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, looks like <laughs> lot of um, lot of leaning towards Paul. But anybody here who would like to who says I think Paul was right, I would I would side Paul. Anyone here? <clears throat> Anyone? Uh, i also i actually i feel that as a godly leader and as a he yeah, expected to live godly lives i think uh, paul was trying to uh, show mark that you know he has to be responsible to mm -hmm. god and integrity with god is important and not only with the, the team but with it was more about you know honoring god through with his life so in that sense paul was trying to put some sense into mark Mm. but one of us having the heart of god 
I mean, the compassion. He saw the him as, as a future, you know, uh, as a potential leader or something like that. In that sense, he and being a relative of his, he didn't want to pull him down or make him feel low. So he he encouraged him. But as a as a man of God, I think Paul was looking at the other side of the spiritual growth that yeah. is required in every believer. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, thank you, thank you, uh, everyone, like you know, for your answers and insights. Um, I think, uh, like like I told you earlier, like you know, I don't know if we have enough information to say, uh, hey, Paul was right or Barnabas was right. This this is something that happened. Uh, I'm sure it, it might have seemed like a very painful thing for the early church, like you know, two key leaders who split. Um, in fact, um, like you know, in one of the views that I've I've read, is they saying that like you know maybe maybe Paul was right because like you know this is almost the last time we hear about Barnabas, and the rest of the New Testament it's mostly Paul. Like you know, the, the, like you know, the rest of the Book of Acts. It's, it's it just traces Paul's journey like you know, mostly because Luke traveled with Paul and like you know but we we don't hear about Barnabas and so, so I don't know like like I said I don't, I don't know if you have enough information to to kind of have conclusion on that. Uh, good thing is <clears throat> uh, though there was division there was multiplication like you know the the uh, like you know Paul and Silas then carry on journey Ma, Barnabas and Mark carry on this journey and it's like you know so it becomes the like two teams that are now going. And eventually, like we see that Barnab- uh, Paul and uh, John Mark also reconciled. And so it was like, you know, it was wonderful. God all worked everything out for well. Uh, okay, I'll come back. I'll come back to this particular uh, question again. But um, there are some things in our life over which we do not have any control. Okay, we do not have any control over that. Um, so these are some five things. There are more things, but there are these are five things. Uh, looking at the pictures, can can anyone say like you know what do what do these five pictures mean? Like uh, what are those five things that you think that we do not have control over? I think maybe of, yeah yes sister, maybe how our family members behave. Uh, the first one. Yes, right? yes, yes. You're right. How your family members be, uh, behave, or uh, mm, or even if you want to take it a little back, like you know, uh-huh. I don't have control on which family I'm going to be a part of. Ah, okay. Thanks. Yes, like you know, I don't. I, I have come absolutely no idea which family. Like you know, none of us have that uh, that control. And it's, uh, and what about the other ones? Second one, maybe a future career. Is that it? Future carry, uh, it's not a great picture actually. Uh, I didn't get a good picture. It was more like our abilities. Um, like, you know, we don't have control over that. Like, you know, God decides who is made how. Like, you know, so and so is going to be good in uh, a certain line. Like, you know, it's going to be good in the sciences, it's going to be good in the arts, and, and so on. So, like, that's basically, I'm just trying to show different things. Like, you know, God is in control of that. Uh, there could be twins who are in a family. And one child is very uh, different in a certain area, another child completely very, very different. So God decides that. Yeah, so that's that's another thing. Um, what do you think about the next one? Uh, our friendship or our communities where we are put up in yes yes sister like you know in one way it's right just think about this like you know if you think about our own childhood and who, how our friends are um like being small we don't have the power to choose which which neighborhood we're going to live in or which school we're going to go to or which class and section you're going to be part of but like you know that that's where usually we make our first friends and, and, you know, all these friends become very special and very close to us. If only we had studied in another school, like, you know, we would have never maybe made that friend. And this goes on as we carry on with life. Even if you think about, um, like, you know, which college you're going to join or after we start working, which, which where do we get job and who's going to be a colleague, who's going to be a, on our team? We have absolutely no control over this. So friendship is something, like, you know, in which we do not have control. It's, it's a very, um, it just happens. It just happens at that moment. So that's another thing. 
What about the next picture? Again, I think the pictures are not very, very. Uh, is it? I'm is sorry. it to do? With, is it to do with the uh, our looks and popularity? Something like. That? Um, I think. Like, I think you can say that is also one, like, you know, in which we don't have much, we don't have control over the way we look and so on. Uh, yes, you are right. But in this particular uh, image, um, I was thinking of uh, like- you know, the, the way they behave, yeah. The, the, the different types of behavior we cannot uh, uh, control or we cannot comprehend uh, how each one behaves. Uh, y yes, yes. Or That's correct. Clothes a very close uh, friendship with people whom we closely work with. Hmm. Is that I, what it is? The, the, that picture, is it? I actually, okay, the, what I was actually trying to uh, depict through that picture was actually experiences, life's experiences. Okay, so uh, like, I'm sorry, I should, I should probably be a little more clear, like, you know, more than the picture, just look at the heading on top and like, you know, try to guess. Uh, so we, we never know, right? Like, you know, what experience we're going to have when something good is going to happen to us, uh, when something not so great is going to happen to us. Maybe a sickness comes up, comes along, maybe for us or for our families. Um, like, you know, maybe this, uh, like, you know, as a child, you understand, like, you know, maybe your father gets um, a new job and because of that, you get transferred to another place. So you have a completely new experience. Uh, so... So experiences are another thing that we have absolutely no control over, but they they have a they play a key role in influencing us. They play a key role in in the in, in the way it shapes our life. So like you know, just our family, our abilities, our friendships, our experiences, and these are things that we don't have control over. And similarly, the last picture, like you know, best I just tell you what it is. It's actually personality. It, it's, we don't have control over like, over, like, you know, what kind of personality that we are going to have. So I want to dive a little deep into this particular um, topic itself, like, because that's what we're talking about. Uh, any guesses, you know, looking at this picture, well, what do you see? What do you understand looking at the three pictures you can see in this slide? What do you think it means? Our mobile life with all the apps. Uh, excellent, excellent sister. Very good. Uh, so let me ask this: what, what are the differences that you see in the three three pictures? You're right. It's it's a mobile, like a screenshot of the mobile, like you know the the, the screen uh, of the mobile phone of what you see on a phone. That what's different? Yes, yes, sister. I can't see the your screen, brother. I don't know what happened. It just disappeared. Are you able to see it now? No, I no. don't know what happened. Anyway, anyway, you go ahead. Don't stop. <laughs> so you can, you can, uh, you can uh, just mute or unmute or you can go out and come in. Okay. 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 Because others are able to see that. Okay. Okay. What we see in the screen is some mobile screen differences. Okay. 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 Um, I think uh, Sister Rani said every app has different properties. Uh, that's that's a good. You, I think you're getting closer to what I want to share as well. Okay. So, any any other answers before I tell you what what I wanted to say? Anybody else? I think the home screen shows what we are, uh, what we really want okay. uh, to be connected to, like the Facebook, um, the chat. I mean, I want to be connected immediately to what's happening, okay. or I want to, you know, quickly go on to different apps and. A click just at the uh, you yeah. know one screen shot to know what uh, I can use immediately. Okay. Okay. Okay, sister. Uh, that, that I think it's some uh, excellent insight. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, well, simply uh, yes, yes. Go on, go on. Who, who's the, I'm sorry. Who somebody uh, wanted to? It's a. Uh, I mean the 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 mobile has so many different. I mean uh, things to show us. And uh, we can use, you know, in the same way, I think God has put things in us and which we have to explore, actually. And uh, even the mobile that I have, I don't know everything, you know. <laughs> I need to explore it every day. In fact, every every now and then they keep on telling me this, 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 that. 
and mm-hmm. i realized there's so much in the mobile which i still don't know and mm-hmm. i think is the same with me i think i there may be so much in me which i don't know i still have to explore i, I think it's a wonderful insight i think you know uh, you are absolutely right uh, we can actually directly connect it to what i want to say like you know especially on this topic of personality okay um the simple reason i put this is is basically you're right it's a, it's the screenshot of three phones but there are three three different phones the first picture that you see is is the picture of an apple phone okay that the icons the buttons that are that so that's an, that's how the it looks for an apple phone the one in the middle where they like you know this uh, purple color tiles that's how a windows phone looks like you know this is a phone which has windows as its as its interface uh it's it was quite popular like like maybe till 10 years ago um but now it's not popular anymore okay and the one on the right is is what is called the android phone like a very commonly used phone and most of us might be using android phones if you use an lg or a samsung or something like that like you know you are using an android phone so what does this mean so the purpose of a phone is is a certain like you no know, you use phones to make phone calls you use it to send text messages you use it to maybe read news or watch videos or like you know go to facebook or instagram or whatever like you know there there are million things a phones can do but how you do it depends on which phone you use if you use an apple phone the way you enter the screen the way you go into the find the find the right application and use it is still different in the same way how we do it like you know for a windows phone it's going to be different and how we're going to do it in an android phone is is different so the point is everything like you know you can do the same functions in each of these phones but the way you do it is different the way you do it is different and i think that's how i would like to define personality personality is how <clears throat> is what the god gives us is how you and i interact with this world it's how we we interact with this world uh there are like seven a seven or eight of us on this call in the same kind of situation all eight of us would react in eight different ways because that's our personality it forms the basis of our decision making our lifestyle uh, the kind of friends that we're going to make the jobs that we do how we how how we handle success failures stress everything directly is because of our personality and just like how our physical features like you know we say that god gives us uh, like you know our, how we look we spoke about that like you know our talents and abilities everything is given by god and so is our personality our personality like in those invisible trait it is given by god i think it's complete it's, it is given by god and that's why it's important to understand and that's why I like what brother just shared like you know i don't even know to the full depths of who i am sometimes i don't know why i react this way why i speak this way <clears throat> it could very well be because of our personalities so uh, just to kind of bring a bring a conclusion to that the conflict between paul and barnabas i feel i feel it was a personality issue okay paul was made of a certain personality where like you know he was this very strong leader like you know cut and right very target oriented very objective very goal oriented kind of person because that's who he is okay on the other side barnabas is more like like you know like the peacemaker like you know the you want lavanga lavanga see keep more there in that too much of it is there so uh, okay so so barnabas was more like the the peacemaker and and um, uh, the guy who the guy who tries to bring everyone together and the unity kind of a person okay so i i feel this was a key personality issue which because of which they caused a conflict <clears throat> there are many ways in which you can understand our, our personalities but one thing that I, <clears throat> i would like to talk a little bit about is called the four temperaments test the four temperaments test uh, this was uh, originally done like you know by by some psychologists and so on but the christian uh author a pastor and a counselor his name is tim lahe i wouldn't be surprised if you've heard of him tim lahe he adapted his four temperaments to um 
he had these four temperaments to uh, to to a christian world view okay so it's this the name of the book that he's written called is, is called spirit fill temperament an excellent book excellent book i i've used this book quite a bit in some of my sessions and i want to share a little bit a brief about all that he shares in this particular in this particular uh, book so so let me be clear so so a recap personalities are something that's god given it's part of us um it's little hard to kind of understand personality it's not like a fully actual science <clears throat> in fact psychologists and so on like they've been doing researches for so many years and so people have come up with their own system of how to understand personality and they come up with some psychometric tests and things like that with their own definitions one of this test is called the four temperament test and that's what i want to show you a little bit about so uh this four temperaments are the first temperament is what is known as a sanguine okay so what are some obvious characteristics and traits of a sanguine if you can look at that um uh, like you know the strengths of a sanguine are they are very sociable very charismatic outgoing confident warm hearted <coughs> pleasant lively optimistic fun loving spontaneous there's never a dull moment when you are there somebody who's quick to apologize and easy to make an uh, easy friend maker an easy friend maker is there anybody here who said like you know wow that is so much me that like you know i'm just like that person is there anybody here who can say that no one no one who can say like you know i am this part kind of person i am very uh, very social easy to make friends like you know very lively uh, well to some extent uh, okay i feel i'm feel i feel i'm like that but you know there are times <laughs> not always the same yes there there definitely brother definitely we can't be 100% that always but yes but right well, yes, thank you Uh, let me just show some of the other personality traits as well like my uh, other personalities as well so that like you know it'll be easier for us to to find out the second personality is something known as choleric okay so what are the strengths of a choleric person usually they are ambitious passionate very leader like focused efficient practical good at planning good at problem solving confident they are motivating they delegate work and they usually right like you know they they very right and like you know in their insights and taking decisions and they are very good during times of an emergency they are able to take take decisions very fast uh very insights anybody here who says like you know i think i can recognize i identify myself to this particular personality not me but maybe pastor <laughs> no uh i i uh, well um like usually leaders uh, have this personality like you know quite strong so you could be you could be right sister you could be right <coughs> the next personality is called phlegmatic these are people who are very relaxed quiet and calm they are very content with themselves they like to be kind they are very consistent a good friend a steady and a faithful friend they are very accepting they like to be diplomatic and peace making like you know don't like to get into conflicts they are rational okay they are curious observant and an easy friend maker a very kind of a with a, a, like a laid back person who's very easy to talk to easy to be with uh, who doesn't not, who does not like to cause conflict if somebody is like you know doing something uh, uh, creating a problem um they 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 just happy to adjust and go along with it okay so anybody here who says like you know i think i'm close to being a phlegmatic that sounds like me first oh. okay 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 sister eh, very good all right okay the last one is called melancholic it's called melancholic okay so these are people who are very very thoughtful they considered uh they are very cautious well organized sometimes to like you know they're an excessive planner everything is like you know written down neatly organized schedule oriented detail 
creative and poetry and art and invention um they're independent okay and they're good at preventing problems if a call ring is call break is good at solving problems melancholics are good at preventing problems like you know they try to force you what problem can come and trying to avoid that yeah so anybody here who says like you know that sounds like me brother when i look at everything i can take little bit of pieces of everything, from it. Of everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're right you're right sister um we uh, every all of us will have a little bit of everything okay uh, but usually one dominates a little bit more one dominates more so we have like a major personality and a minor personality so like for example uh, for me for me it's uh i'm i'm more melancholic and uh, a little phlegmatic that's me okay that's that's my personality so uh, uh so we 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 will we'll, we'll be a combination of two usually and one will dominate a little bit more okay now the thing is um like i said if personality is how we interact with the world uh, our personality is going to affect so many things it's going to affect Uh, let me start like you know from right from home okay so usually husbands and wives will be very different personalities and it will affect the way like you know we relate and talk to each other at home it will affect the way like you know how we have conflicts and how we resolve conflicts at home i can give an example so imagine like you know if one of them if the husband is choleric and the wife is a melancholic or like you know the husband or wife is a melancholic like you know either one of them so choleric's are very direct right if they see a problem okay they want to talk about it they want to dig it up they want to go to the root of the issue well a melancholic like you know is very uncomfortable talking about that okay like they want to prevent the problem so you can see this can be a, a this itself can be actually part of a conflict then one of them wants to talk about it and the other person does not want to talk about it okay um and 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 in so many ways in so many areas so especially for those of us who are in ministry like you know whatever kind of ministry that we, we do so we need to understand that like you know when we come to ministry when we are working with people we bring our personality and we interact with somebody else with another personality okay so that even there there is the dynamic involved either you can great get great synergy because like you know you're able to easily relate and work well or like you know it's going to cause tension maybe you work in teams when you work like you know in a small team like you know you you want to organize a camp for your church or something like that and and you see your, you will bring our personalities together so on one side we have this high meticulous planner who will plan everything who's going to bring the pencil who's going to uh, like you know what time the bus will arrive at the campus what time it will leave and we have another person like you know like a phlegmatic person who's very chalta hai like you know very very casual and and like you know that can again like you know cause this uh, tension or or conflict within the group so we understand that like you know our personalities can can actually clash now um a couple of pointers before we move on uh because of the fall because of what happened in the garden of eden like you know when adam and eve disobeyed god yeah sin entered and we you know that and sin has even entered our personalities okay so just think about like a sanguine a very sociable very outgoing kind of a person okay on one side like they are the life of the party it's great to have them it's great to have them in our youth groups like they're constantly making jokes and things like that but so many times they like, you know they uh, they might do it at the expense of somebody else okay there's a very good chance like you know they think only about themselves they are the life of the party like i said so they they are so excited about what's happening and they are like you know that they forget to be sensitive to somebody who's feeling awkward over there and similarly is a is a person like of a choleric a very strong leader okay so we we need people like that like you know um, if you look at moses before when he was still in the palace right he seems like a choleric personality he's like you know how can the egyptian egyptian treat us like this i'm going to do something about it he goes and kills someone like you know they're very direct very rough but they can step on so many toes while they do what they want they can be highly selfish they can use and exploit people they i know what i'm doing is right this has to be done 
like you know this person does not understand uh, like you know what the problem is and i'm going to i'm going to be very clear about it I, and like you know they can be, they can use the person phlegmatics okay they can struggle with things like laziness they can think of like you know maybe maybe there's a difficult conversation that has to be had but like you know like that it is uh, who will have all that like you know let's just let's just be just let, let go as long as it goes why 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 create a problem when there is no problem at all on the other side like you know we have melancholics like you know some of their weaknesses could be they deeply deeply emotional people they can easily get hurt when somebody says something or like you know does something to us like you're like you know why is this person hurting so much hurting us so much and like you know they go into a shell you know uh, they generally say like you know people who have a melancholic are maybe a little bit more prone towards depression or something like that so it's because of sin like you know our personalities are crushed our personalities have weaknesses so you can see for sanguine like you know some of the weaknesses are impulsive they're late they're shameless forgetful <clears throat> compulsive talker too loud sometimes too happy distractible not interested in following through with tasks that are boring very self absorbed can be an exaggerator and sometimes they can appear unauthentic unauthentic a choleric on the other hand can be very aggressive domineering inflexible impatient rude and tactless can become argumentative unable to relax uncomfortable around emotion low on empathy not understanding what the other person is going through Uh, can get discouraged by failures like you know they get their self worth from failure uh, from from success so if if they if they think about if they fail at anything that then then they like you know it kind of is very hard for them to to pick them up because they want success they're too busy for people like you know not very good in spending time uh, they can be intolerant and they can be a leader who demands loyalty okay Now, see just like how we saw strengths like you know All, all the weaknesses might not apply to call to to all of us okay but there can be part of it which is part of our personality a melancholy can be too obsessive too cautious not a risk taker like i said prone to depression prone to moodiness uh, like you know becomes a perfectionist like you know view that like you know it becomes hard for others to le- work and live with them everything should be so neatly planned and organized and set right like it will be very difficult okay uh they are very hard to please they are very difficult people to please in the same way they themselves have a very low sometimes view of self esteem like you know they might do a good job and their their boss or somebody at home might have said hey great great job with what you just did it will be hard for them they'll be they'll be very suspicious are you being right are you being truthful it's hard for them to like you know um to even get appreciation uh sometimes a procrastinator discontent discontent with our themselves and others and they're prone to play the martyr so they said it's okay i'll sacrifice like you know i know like you know like you know this kind of uh, all those things rooted in pride that that can come out of mel- being a melancholic and phlegmatic is somebody who's very shy they fearful of change prone to laziness and being stubborn passive aggressive unable ne- to take decisions very poor in decision making not go- goal oriented very unenthusiastic about life too compromising undisciplined they can become sarcastic <coughs> if they get into a difficult situation they use words in a certain way to kind of attack yeah they can so because of that like their their just their their views and opinions and just their body language can be very discouraging okay because they they'll be very non participative as well okay so looking at the weaknesses do you think like you know are you able to relate at any of these weaknesses that you find over here uh we all know that like you know christ has died for us redeemed us with his love and so like you know i'm not defined by my personality i'm defined by what christ has done for us so having that confidence can i look at myself objectively and see hey these are my true weaknesses is there anybody here who can say that Oh, sorry. I think uh, when I close open this, it uh, went. Hmm. 
anyone any 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 thoughts are you, are you are you tracking with me well, i think because of uh, the sin uh, that entered this world i think uh, all of us are marred uh, because of sin and these weaknesses are seen in practically you know all of us you know some form of weaknesses and i feel that even in the family we find different people with different weaknesses so it's really really difficult to handle and to 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 solve situations you know yes yes brother i i think you're right like you know i think that's that's why it's key to know why do we behave the way we behave so like i told you right like you know my i'm dominating little bit on the on the uh, melancholic and phlegmatic these are this is my combination so you can think about that okay so um on one side i become a people pleaser so like you know then like you know when i understand my own um weaknesses of, of the part my personality uh, i try to go to the heart of like you know what's what's causing me to behave the way i do yes it's part of my weak uh, of my of my personality but i come to god and i tell him like god i can easily be a people pleaser do you know it is very hard for me to say no to something because of that it's very hard for me to say no uh and i'm learning this like you know as i journey along because when i say when i, when I because i'm not able to say no uh it just affects me it affects our family it affects so many so many other things as well yeah, yeah so. i just wanted to also ask you um hmm. that as we are growing um there are times when we have been immature and our weaknesses have been very you know on the uh, uh, dominant side and hmm. over a period of time Uh, they are kind of uh, we are kind of uh, improving on our weaknesses uh, so there's again a combination of different characteristics here there is a possibility right yes very much sister yeah thanks yeah so um uh, i think at, at a basic level this is this is about self awareness just knowing why i behave this way and just knowing like you know hey i can be prone to this so imagine if i am a choleric person uh, i have a great plan for this project but i can easily use people to get my end and so i'm constantly trying to like you know check my own heart my check my own motives to see like you know okay why am i talking this way why am i like you know talking to this person a certain way okay am i trying to just am i seeing this as a benefit for them as a benefit for all of us or am i just trying to use them to get my my way and so like you know it kind of actually sometimes it's hard it's not it's not it's easy to talk about this but the practical steps of it is very 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 hard that you sit and ask god saying like you know uh, god help me give me wisdom to deal with this help me to die to myself like you know that's part of a christian walk part of a discipleship like you know this carrying the cross daily and dying to ourselves i think it's personality is very core of it. very very core of it anybody else any other thoughts anything you are able to understand relate to or like any comment usually we don't see it as a weakness in a person i mean in my in my own self or in the in somebody else usually we don't see it as a weakness but we in fact get angry with the person and we instead of helping the person <laughs> we actually shout and challenge whether it's children or whether it's family member or in society itself we come across different characters and you know we somehow we don't handle that weakness correctly so i we need god's grace first to see ourselves and our weaknesses and also to see weaknesses in us i think we need a lot of uh, you know gods yes yes brother uh, like you know you're absolutely right that, like you know i think that's key to to even to know that when two people are meeting okay uh, apart from all the other things that here are two personalities that are talking to each other so we come with our strengths and our weaknesses 
and all the dynamics and all the all the different interactions that are involved in that's part of that um and especially in ministry like you know yesterday we were talking about teens and youth and working with them right so uh, one of the things that's happening is like their personalities itself is becoming more and more clear to themselves and to out, us as outsiders okay actually that's a great place for us to understand personalities if you think of a youth group you will automatically see there's one life of the party one guy who's like you know uh, because of him the energy is high and on the other side you'll see another another guy or girl who's like you know who's this who's a strong leader you know you, you know you can depend on them okay and on the other side then you have this like you know very uh, very laid back always on the fringes struggling to come inside kind of a, another person that you might see like the phlegmatic and you can see the the melancholic the melancholic are like you know usually like um they are um very good storytellers they are very good um in 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 arts and the creative things like you know they bring a lot of beauty to our whole uh, to the whole group so they're able to easily identify these these people so when we interact with them like you know we take our personalities and meet their personalities and we talk about it so i think that's that's key um i okay we just have about 10 minutes left i i don't know if we can do this but uh there is actually a small questionnaire or a small a very small tool that we can use to um to 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 understand like you know what what's my uh, personality as such let me see if i can share this slide as well uh, what i can do is i i don't know if you'll be able to do the whole thing now but i can share this as this pdf uh to to pastor uh david and like you know he might be able to share it to all of you so if you see over here um there is four sections yeah so um you need to put a value for each of these each of these statements uh for example let's just like you know emotional if you put one it say like that is not me i'm not at all like that two is this is usually not me okay three years this is usually me like you know yes i think i generally mostly i'm emotional uh or four is hey that is mostly me i am i am i'm very emotional easily or five is that is definitely me i'm 100% sure that i'm emotional so you put five and so on so you put a, a value for each and every one of this one of these uh these statements and and finally like you know you add it all up you add it all up and then you see in which is the highest that you have so i can share this pdf with you and at the end it gives you a description of like you know what it means like you know what's your personality type uh, and like you know what's your personality description so uh, i can just give show you sample sample of like you know of okay so this is my dominant personality if you can see this mel flag this is this is it's a combination of being melancholic and phlegmatic okay um it, it's it's a nice description like if you think about this it's just like you know um they are gifted introverts they combine analytical perfectness into the melancholy of organized efficiency of the phlegmatic they usually good natured humanitarian so prefer a quiet solitary environment for study and research um uh, these people have greatly benefited humanity many of the world's inventions have come from people with this kind of personality but then look at their own weaknesses okay they can easily get discouraged and develops a very negative thinking pattern um and like you know he they have a sin to to develop the spirit of criticism uh it it can easily happen okay he is capable of inner angers and hostility and can even become revengeful okay and they are vulnerable to fear anxiety and a negative self image um and, and so on so like like you know then they also give an example like in the bible apostle john was most likely candidate for being the mel flag okay so it it kind of it 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 uh, describes your different personalities that's there 
and uh, and it breaks it down and shows so just just a tool for us to understand like you know this is not like this is not gospel truth but just an idea for us to know who we are and uh, and how our personalities interact okay um any questions any thoughts anything that you like to share because i i i am mostly done right now Okay. Um, there's nothing else that's like you know that you like say like you know. Um, David, is there anything that you like to say? Yeah, I'll just add to it. with a uh, lot of complexities so beautifully the lord has created it as the image and uh, he has given us a life to live with relate with do the ministry and he has given us a lifetime to evolve and uh, complete our mission on earth and uh, he has also given us this analytical understanding about the personalities and now we understand personality of ourselves and others only with a mission that is to better ourselves and now there are a lot of patchworks that is required if we want to relate with people communicate gospel and the spirit of god is going to do all that so we must understand when dealing with personalities that the spirit of god is much involved each person is a world in themselves and uh, this world can be explored uh, to some extent not completely and uh, when we think about think about people <coughs> there are many people who don't understand or who don't give any importance to understanding but what happens is when we go to the word of god the bible says how to relate with each other and why to relate with each other to what extent you can relate with each other at one point paul said if possible live in peace with one another submit to one another weep with those who weep rejoice with those who rejoice so when we have the aspect of god who is a living reality and who is a sovereign who is in sovereign control of everything and is giving us a mission definitely relating with personalities becomes a very interesting factor understanding ourselves is sometimes to manage ourselves sometimes we have to wait in faith in long suffering sometimes we have to raise up to the occasion and talk and act and sometimes even we have to condemn and rebuke and sometimes we have to say no and at times we have to say yes and others are not doing something the lord tells to stop when others are doing so many things the lord says you don't do understanding our personality is only to better ourselves and better each other therefore we will take god in our relationships jesus christ as a example and model to reflect in our personalities that's the whole idea behind all these things otherwise there is a uh, um i forgot the name some window is there if you divide a person inner character and a personality into four corners 
a square divided into four corners. One side is what you know about yourself, what others know about yourself. Another corner is what you don't know about yourself, but others know about yourself. And there is one more corner, what you know about yourself, others do not know about yourself. And there is another corner, what you also don't know, what others also don't know about yourself. It's a very vast subject, but the Lord has revealed so many things to us. And today, as a student of God's word, we can say we are created in God's image. We can have our identity in Christ and grow in it. And also lead others into the reflections of Christ. So, enjoy each personality. Once I started uh, attending my personality development classes, I started enjoying it. It is in the same class, I also developed some self-respect. How sometimes people bully you, sometimes people, how they bully you, and how you should respond. And at the same time, how people are in need and how you can minister to each other. So maybe this basic understanding of the personalities will give us an idea about categorizing people only to minister to them and relate to them. Where to draw lines and where to even go beyond and uh, reach out to them with an extra mile. And if you find a black sheep, how to deal with it? Everything will be understood in the light of Christ's identity. Jesus always had people around him. He dealt with them. He didn't wait to encourage people. And he didn't wait even to rebuke people. He was waiting even in the last moment of his life while hanging on the cross to redeem people. The worst of the sinner, when they asked for his help in desperation, was given the greatest honor of taking along with him to paradise. So as a Christian minister, leader, keep this in mind. And keep your respect, keep your dignity, teach others, help others, correct others. And grow more in this idea. Now today we got a lot of keys to understand people in the light of God's word. May we continue to do that. Okay. It was very interesting today, Brother Alan started with uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas. Very interesting, isn't it? I was also thinking hmm, that in a situation that we read, read in Bible, it's not the final thing. Maybe. At that point, Paul was definitely saying taking Barnabas was a hindrance in the past. Why we have to add hindrance this time also? All right. But others were telling, no, let us give a chance to him. So I was just thinking, how if Barnabas himself came and told him another chance? I think Paul would have readily given. That's why I said the event that we happen to read between what happened between them was not the final thing. You know, the story should have continued. And of course, we don't have the records, but as uh, Alan pointed out, we don't have uh, any more instances about Paul and Pandavas being together. If that is the case, then we must understand in different ways to relate to people. And we must wait for opportunities to be with each other. At the same time, God understands. And he works out things. Paul was in good relationship or they meant their relationship, they reconciled or not, we do not know. According to their personalities, God used them. At the end of the day, we all fear God. We all want to fulfill the will of God. And we want to obey God at all circumstances in terms of our relationship. Hope you all got some insights to build on, some foundation to work on, and uh, some directions to go on. Thank you so much. God bless you. Apply this in your ministry. And thank you, Brother Alan, for bringing out that wonderful 
insights in a, such a short time and uh, we are able to reach out to our understandings also and we will definitely be able to build on that. God bless you, Brother Alan. God bless your ministry. Uh, Alan, can you say a word about your ministry? What you are doing right now? Sure, sure. Uh, Anna. <laughs> Uh, sorry, just one small pointer of also about that, um, about this whole personality thing. Uh, so generally they say our personalities don't change. We, we live with it, like, you know, like it's like the inner construct and, uh, and there's a lot of alterations that happen, but at the core of it, it does not change unless there is some really drastic life event that unexpectedly meets us and then we might change. Like the example that I told you of Moses. Like, you know, 40 years before, you see, he's like, you know, ready to take on the entire army and fight. But then 40 years later, like, you know, when, when he's in the wilderness and the burning bush and God tells him, go and uh, bring the people out that this time, most saying, I'm not the guy for that. You see, 